So we're up to episode number seven, the final episode in our beginner's guide to sea fishing. Uh, we're heading down to the south coast today and we're going to be fishing from uh, Langney Point, which is between Eastbourne and Sovereign Harbour in Pevensey. And we're lucky enough today to be joined uh, by angling coach Brian Pask, with more than 40 years on the angling scene. He's also a fishing coach with the Angling Trust. Uh, and we've got one of his young junior anglers from the Bex Hill Club today, Connor. And he'll be showing us the ropes today for fishing the beach for the first time. So first pull to call, um, something we always recommend is the local tackle shop. Um, Brian picked up his bait here. So I met up with Brian and Connor uh, down in Pevensey Bay in Angler's Den, the tackle shop. And as we always recommend, if you are starting angling for the first time, and even more experienced anglers, do pop in at the local tackle shop any opportunity you get. Uh, Brian's picked up the bait here for today's session. Um, but you do get to hear about what's being caught, um, and discuss the tides, weather conditions, um, and it's a good place for a little bit of a gossip, and obviously, and obviously you can spend your money and get a few bits for the session that you might need. And it's got a really good community feel, the Angler's Den as well. So they're not paying me to say this, but they do have a very good, um, well-stocked shop here. Um, and I picked up on a bit of a conversation about uh, what the owners think is the best leader knot for braid. So I gave him the microphone. This is what he said. Because it's, it's 10 on a spool. It's 10 on a spool. It's supple. It's two-tone in colour. And it's 0.28 to 0.57, but it's... If you read it on there, it says it's 24 to 75 pound breaking strain. It's the best leader on the market by a mile for anyone using braid, by a mile. So you can obviously get that on the shop. I'll leave a link in the notes if, if that's something you want. Okay, uh, so Connor, if you want to release the drag off the top of the reel, and then we can take the line out, unclip it, and making sure it's underneath the bail arm, if you want to put it through the rod rings. I hold the rod, and you carry on, and just make sure it goes through the rings and doesn't go across the rod blank itself. So we've actually got a leader onto braided line here. Now the shock leader's there to take that initial shock when you're actually casting out. So, so uh, what we don't want is the lead weights snapping the line as you cast out. So the shock leader on this is um, a tapered one. It's 15 pounds breaking strain up to 50 pounds breaking strain. So the, the, the sharp end where the lead weight's gonna be pinging off the, the, reel, uh, the rod rather, will be in at about 50 pounds uh, breaking strain and that should take the four ounce lead without any problems at all that we'll be using today. Now what we also have if on the end is a little quick link and onto the quick link we'll actually be putting the rig itself. Now the rig we're going to be using is a little two hook flapper which Connor's now going to attach to the quick link on the end of the shock leader. Excellent and on the other end of that rig and onto that one we're going to snap a four ounce breakaway style lead weight.
and there is the rig, the rod, the reel, ready to rock, ready to go. Now this particular rig is using fairly small hooks. These are a size six hook um, attached to 25 pound nylon monofilament, which is the hook snoods. And the rig body itself is made out of 60 pound braking strain nylon as well, because that's going to carry the lead weight. And we don't want that snapping mid-flight either. And the reason we're using smallish hooks today is that we'll be targeting flatfish and using worm baits. Okay, so the lug worm we're going to be using are freshly dug. These have just been purchased from the Angler's Den at Pevensey Bay. Um, and Connor's going to attach one to a hook. That's it, you can keep the worm the hook all the way through the centre of the worm. Because we're actually targeting flatfish, he's going to use about half of this particular worm because it's quite a big one. So what? pop it in the palm of your hand and it's a nicely presented bait with the hook point sticking out. And on the other hook, we'll actually be putting a ragworm. Which ends which? That's so these have got little pincers and that's the, the that's slide your fingers right up to the mouth end that's it and if you pop the hook into in through the the mouth that's it pop the hook into there and then it can't bite you so if you can keep the hook point all the way through the center of the worm if you can threading it on They get a little bit slippy when they get uh, when the juices start to flow out of these little ragworm. But uh, that's nice. Okay, right. Just thread that one through a little bit further for you. So just mind your fingers. So we've got two nicely presented baits. One lugworm, one ragworm, and we get them out in the water and see if we can find some fish. Grip reds, because these are stainless steel, you can actually adjust them. So if it's rough, you can tighten them up. If it's not so rough, you can make them a little bit easier to pull out the sand a bit later. So just going to tighten these up a little bit. There's a little bit of tide running and there's a little bit of sea running as well. So we just tighten them up and that will now sit in the seabed until we want to pull the spikes out to bring in hopefully the fish. And we can get away with using a lighter lead weight because of the braid that we're using today which is thinner so it attracts less tide pull and less wind resistance as well. Um, so all in all it makes the fishing a lot lighter and hopefully a lot more enjoyable. Okay, what we've actually got here today, Connor, uh, we're fishing low tide at Langley Point in Eastbourne. Um, slightly off to our right as we're looking at the sea is a bit of a mud hole, which is about 70, 80 metres out. Um, we've had some good soul out of that in the past, but a little bit nearer. Um, this, the shingle bank goes down into a bit of a dip. It's quite deep water. It runs into a sand area as well, so we can pick up all sorts of fish out there. There's uh, flatfish, bass, smooth hounds, You've whiting and coddling in the winter, so it's an all round good venue for different species of fish. Um, if it was calmer, we'd have a chance of some mackerel around as well this evening, but it's a bit too rough for that. So I wouldn't expect to see any, but um, you, never, you never know. 
Um, so obviously what we're waiting for at the moment, where you are out is about 45 metres or thereabouts. So you're right on, you can just about see where the clear water is, about that sort of distance out. It's a little bit rougher inside. Um, where the sand deposits are picked up, so it's a little bit murkier. So where we are in that clearer water, we'd hope, hopefully be in with a chance of uh, some multiplier reel set up. Um, I prefer mine to be low on the butt itself for pendulum casting. Um, the actual setup, putting the line through the rings is exactly the same as with a, a fixed ball reel. And again, I use the quick link, which you may just be able to see. Use that on the butt um, so I can get a longer drop when I'm pendulum casting. And that allows the, the cast itself to be slower. So if you make a mistake, you can actually recover from it. If you have it sh the line shorter, uh, any mistakes tend to be um, a little bit dangerous as far as the lead getting snapped off is concerned. So yeah, it's, it's very much more forgiving. Um, this has got a tapered shock leader, which is uh, 15 through to 60 pound braking strain. Um, and as you can see, it's a Alibu 6500 Rocket CT Chrome. Classic. It's a bit of a classic reel, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's got its own inbuilt braking system as well, because you can adjust to suit the individual that's using it. Um, so when on the occasions that I do teach anybody how to use it, we can wind the brakes up quite reasonably tight to prevent any overruns with it. And as, uh, as you get more used to it, you can ease it off and uh, get further distances. Right, so this is a rod rest setup. This is a, a tripod rod rest. It's quite stable, sits on the beach quite nicely, and it allows the rod to sit in a good position in the tide. Now, the way I've set it up today is not directly facing the sea, it's slightly um, angled, and that's because the wind is blowing from the direction right behind it, and it just allows that little bit of additional stability with the wind. It won't take the rods away. I think it's probably one of the most valuable pieces of beach equipment that we use but probably vastly underrated as well. Well, they do say don't look in another man's tackle box, but <laughs> let's have a look inside Brian's now. Unfortunately, I lost the audio for this bit, but uh, you can get a good idea of what somebody who's sort of refined it over the years, what they tend to carry. And I'd imagine there's nothing in here that uh, Brian doesn't need after all those years fishing and coaching.
and having gone through uh, the basics of sea fishing, we were thrown a little bit of a curveball as we came out uh, because we were looking at this gentleman here. He was very pleased to show us an interlined rod. Uh, so basically the line goes through the middle of the rod, through that first rod ring that he's, <laughs> he's taped on there, and it goes through the middle of the rod. So uh, just to confuse you, if you think you you started to get the hang of the basics of sea fishing, and then something like this turns up. <laughs> um, really good. And he's also casting braid off a multiplier as well, so um, breaking a few rules. But he was very good... Um, very good to join us. So uh, thanks very much to Brian and Connor. Uh, they were great sports. Unfortunately, no fish, but the idea of this video was simply to get out uh, and get that first bait in the water. So I hope you've watched the other six uh, episodes in the series. If you are a beginning angler or you just want some tips and things to remind yourself of, um, appreciate your comments underneath as well as always. Is there something that we've missed out in this beginner series that you'd like to have seen perhaps?